Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about what we know so far from Hurricane Ida. Uh, and then later on, I'm going to be talking about the Baton Rouge Temple. I, I tried to find out if there was any news yet as to whether the Baton Rouge Temple had been damaged. It's, uh, it's a little bit too early for that, but I did come across something interesting about the temple that I'm going to discuss in the second half of this video. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, like this video if you like it, hit the notification bell, and please make sure to leave comments so I can know what you think about this whole situation. So right now it looks like um, it's no longer classified as a hurricane. Um, it is a tropical storm. <clears throat> Excuse me. This red area here is when it was classified as a hurricane, or as a Category 4 hurricane, and then it dropped down into Category 2. And now it is a tropical storm, and um, which is still centered over uh, southeastern Louisiana, um, still pretty close to New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Um, but you can see the track here. It's going to be going up through Mississippi, and then it's going to make its way up into uh, Tennessee. By the time it's in Tennessee, it's going to be a tropical depression. But um, over here. It says, Tennessee Emergency Management asks residents to prepare for Hurricane Ida impacts. The Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, or TEMA, on Sunday advised residents across the state to prepare for possible impacts from Hurricane Ida. Um, <clears throat> Hurricane Ida's remnants may reach the west and middle portions of Tennessee on Monday, even through Tuesday, with heavy rain and flash flooding possible um, over the same areas as last weekend's flood emergency. So if you're in Tennessee, just uh, prepare for that. Uh, I guess if you're in the middle and western part of the state, but just be alert, make sure to track this thing. And, and off, obviously if you're in Mississippi and in Louisiana, and um, you know, we pray for those people, everyone that's been affected. Um, yeah, this was, this was no joke. Um, we're gonna go over what we, what we do know so far about this. Um, so right here, this is the power outage map, and um, as you can see here, Mississippi and Louisiana are not doing too well. Um, Mississippi, we have 122,000 customers out of power. In Louisiana, it is 1 million people out of power. So that is quite astounding, and hopefully they're able to get that back up soon. Um, that's a really sad situation, um, but yeah, that, that's the current status of, of, uh, power outages. Now, um, in this article from Wink News, uh, deaths and damage from the storm are nowhere to be, nowhere near being counted yet. The five costliest U.S. storms on record, adjusted to 2021 dollars, our 2005 Katrina at $176 billion in damage, 2017's Harvey at 136, 2017's Maria at 98, uh, 2012's Sandy at 77, and 2017's Irma at 54 billion. So I just want to stop here and point something out. If you look at these dates, we have 2021. Uh, well, we're going to probably have 2021. We have um, 2005, 2017, uh, 20, and 2012. So all those within, um, you know, this last century, and, and especially within the last 10 years, uh, it's just like accelerated. You know, we, we know that these are signs of the times. Things are getting more and more intense and, and escalating and becoming more frequent. So, um, and now we have this most recent one, the one that we're still dealing with, and we'll see where that falls um, compared to these other storms. Um, but I wanted to kind of go over the, the rest of this article up here. Um, when it hit Louisiana on Sunday as a Category 4 storm with 150 mile per hour winds, Ida tied for fifth with a whole bunch of other notorious storms for the highest wind speed when making landfall in the United States. 
said Colorado State University hurricane researcher Phil Klotzbach. Uh, it's behind, it is behind the 1935 Labor Day storm, 1969's Camille, 1992's Andrew, and 2018's Michael. Wind speeds sometimes get changed uh, later after damage is reviewed with both Andrew and Michael upgraded to a Category 5 storm long after windfall. Okay, so that's interesting. So I, I guess something like that could potentially happen here. We'll just have to see. But the true historical mark for the storm is its place as an, as an exclamation point uh, in an onslaught of recent storms. When Ida made landfall, it was the 17th storm to hit the United States in the past two years. Um, the 6th of 2021, said Jeff Masters, a former uh, NOAA hurricane hunter meteorologist and founder of Weather Underground. Already this year, Claudette, Danny, Elsa, Fred, and Henry have hit the United, have hit the United States, but all were tropical storms when they made landfall. Over the past 71 years, the United States averages only three landfall storms a year. Really? Over the, la over the past 71 years, the United States averages only three landfall storms a year. This year's pace is only a tad behind last year's record pace of 11 landfalls in the United States, Master said. And, um, well, and the year's not over yet, so we'll have to see what else happens. But that's, that's pretty stunning. The average is three. Last year's was 11. And we don't know what this year's is going to be. But we already have one, two, three, four, five. And now this one would be six. So Ida's 150 mile per hour blow to Louisiana on Sunday marked the first time in recorded history that a state got back to back years of 150 mile per hour winds or more. All right. So first time in recorded history. Sign of the times. Last year, Hurricane Laura hit Louisiana with 150 mile, 150 mile per hour winds, said meteorologist Steve Bowen, head of the Catastrophe Insight uh, for the risk insurance and consulting firm Aon. Ida is tied with Laura, 2004's Charlie, in storms in 1932, 1919, 1886, and 1856 for hitting the United States with 150 mile per hour winds. Okay, Ida exploded in intensity going from 85 miles per hour uh, to 150 miles per hour in just 20 hours, easily exceeding the official threshold for a rapidly intensifying storm of gaining of at least of gaining at least 35 miles per hour in 24 hours. Ida actually did this twice in a short in its short lifetime. Okay. Um, in one way, Masters figures Ida set a record. Ida was listed at 85 miles per hour 26 hours before landfall, uh, going up to 100 miles per hour 23 hours before landfall. Using the 85 mile per hour figure, that would mean the hurricane increased 65 miles per hour in the 24 hours before landfall, tying the record set in, 20, in 2007 by Umberto for most rapid intensification in the day before landfall. Yeah. So a lot of um, a lot of interesting things with this with this storm. Let's see. The hurricane is okay, now moving on to this Associated Press article. The hurricane is expected to inflict a less severe financial impact from then Hurricane Katrina um, uh, 16 years ago, thanks to a lower storm surge and New Orleans improved levee system. So I guess it would be interesting uh, if they didn't have the improved levee system, how this would compare to Katrina, but I guess we'll no never know. Um, so they're saying here it's not going to be, uh, they don't think it's going to be as bad as Katrina was in terms of damage. And if we go back to this article, uh, Katrina did 176 billion in damage. And then Harvey did 136. So yeah, well, it's too soon to say, obviously, but we'll, we'll need to see where, where it lands.
Um, it sounds like it's pretty bad, though. It seems like there's a lot of damage from what I can see. Um, okay, now moving on to the temple. We're now in the second half of this video. Um, I just wanted to see if there was anything about the Baton Rouge, Louisiana temple. And uh, I wasn't able to find anything, probably because it's it's just too soon. Uh, soon, I checked on Facebook to see if anybody was like doing any public posts about the temple, and um, I didn't find anything. Um, I, de I, de I saw one stake center in the area that they were putting out on the on the stake Facebook page to like uh, ask people to join and you know um, the aftermath to clean up and help and. Uh, so that, that's all that I found, but there are some photos from the Baton Rouge area, um, and, and it definitely took a beating. You can see there were really strong winds here. Look at this, jeez, look at this tree that got uprooted. Um, a bunch of signs have been knocked over, and the wind pushed them sideways. Um... Yeah, so it, another tree that was, no, this is that same tree. So we're going to have to wait for news on that one, on the temple. But as I was uh, trying to, as I was trying to find information about it, um, I came across this. This is a six day old article and it's talking about, uh, so National National Arm of Local LDS Temple, so the church. The church sues at Highland, the city parish, over proposed development. The Utah-based parent organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which has a local temple on Highland Road, is suing at Highland, the mixed use, the mixed use development adjacent to the temple, key real estate company, which is planning to develop a multifamily complex on the site. And the city parish, which approved the controversial complex earlier this summer, the Temple Corporation of the Church of, Je of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints filed the suit on August 20th, so 10 days ago, in 19th Judicial District Court, seeking to stop the 240-unit complex from going forward. This, the suit argues that when the Metro Council approved the project in July, it failed to consider uh several things one two three four five different things the promotion of public health safety and welfare as required by law the uh, the project's impact on existing buildings of cultural significance such as the temple and that's probably the main one right there i, I would assume the relationship between the proposed project and surrounding uses particularly the use of the temple site the relationship between the proposed project and the surrounding uses. Okay. The density and height of the project and its compatibility with surrounding properties. Um, and I would assume maybe this, some of this stuff would include like traffic and um, I, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about this topic, but um, th there is one thing that I can point out, which I'll show you in just a minute and uh, the preservation and protection of wetlands. Uh, the, law, the suit is the latest twist in the controversy over the two-story complex, which many residents of the area oppose because of the increased drainage and flooding problems they fear it will bring to their area. Okay, so, so it's gonna be a two-story complex at, as it's currently planned. Um, so here's a satellite um, image of the area. Here's the Baton Rouge Temple. Here's Highland Road right here. Um, when you go to Street View, here you can see the temple. Right over here is, I guess, the probably the stake center. Um, and then here is at Highland. So this this area over here. So. The article said that it's adjacent to the temple. I didn't see an address, so I, I, I'm assuming that maybe it's talking about this piece of land right here next to the temple, right? This big old uh, field. Um, 
this image was taken March 21st or March of this year. So this is a pretty recent image. You got the for lease sign right here on the property. So I'm, I'm thinking that it's talking about this because I wanted to get an idea of how big a 240 um, unit complex would be. And so I looked online, I found this one that's in um, Park Ridge, New Jersey. And the picture of this right here, I mean, this, this is one, two, three, four, five stories tall. So we're talking about two stories. Um, this place is called the James. So this must be a section of it that's five stories tall. But here, here it is. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh no, yeah, five. There's five stories in this picture too. So you can already see that this is a pretty sizable uh, building. I think there were some other pictures here. You know, so that does take up quite a lot of space um, and that's with five stories so if this is going to be like a two-story thing that it's going to take up even even more um, yeah I'd, I'd imagine it probably just take up this whole area right here so um, but anyway even if it's just like as tall as this building right here or, or two-thirds as tall um, I think probably one of the main issues is I know the church likes to have its temples visible um, so that people can see it as they're driving by and that would probably block the view of the temple because the temple is kind of tucked back in there you know if you're coming from let's go let's go down this way because if you're coming from here you know you can see the temple and then if there was like a, a two-story building right here you're not going to hardly see it at all uh, you probably won't see it at all not even the angel Moroni um, yeah that would just probably be completely out of sight and, and no one would even notice it at all you'd have to like pass the apartment complex or the condos or whatever it's gonna be and then if you just like happen to look this way then you'd, you'd see the temple if you're driving from the other way you can't see it because of this this hill that the stake center is on so it, it basically it would be the same you would just have to happen to look to the left oh hi <laughs> um, you'd have, have to happen to look at, to the left as you're passing by so I mean I, I don't know because like I'm sure the church would would have had to have expected that um, somebody would build something here at some point um, and especially like with this complex right here that's already at the Highland you know you already have this building that looks like it's like three stories tall and so you'd assume that they would probably do do something similar on this side so I don't know if like they knew that it was just like if they knew it was inevitable or they hadn't considered that but um you know, it'd be great if like the church could purchase this land, but they probably can't because it's it's zoned for, you know, for commercial real estate. So, so I don't know. That's just kind of interesting. But here's the temple. Hopefully, uh, there wasn't any damage uh, to it. It looks like you have a lot of trees back here, but it doesn't look like they're they're on the temple. They're kind of like on the other side of this this fence. Um, I don't see a whole lot of like big trees just like these smaller ones right here so um, we're just gonna have to wait and see how the temple did um, you know I'm paying attention to this because I did that video um, about the history of temples and natural disasters which ranged rained bleh, ranged from hurricanes to tornadoes fires lightning so if you haven't seen that video yet I would highly recommend it but um yeah that's all i have for right now so let's pray for all the people that are being affected by this storm everyone that's out of power everyone that's lost somebody and we're not going to have those numbers in for a little while um and let's just hope that you know everyone will weather this the best that the, the best possible so 
Um, all right, so I'll leave it there. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Hit the notification bell. I'll be doing a lot more videos. Um, we're going to be watching for updates on um, the storm and the damage that it did. We're going to be watching other natural disasters and signs of the times and talking about the second coming, church news. Um, I also like to talk about narcissism on this channel, and we'll also be doing videos on homesteading. And I'll talk to you later.